Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria, and on today's episode, we're going to get to know two gentlemen who, through the hand of fate, are living their passion and their purpose. Tim Wambach and Mike Berkson are the creators and stars of the two-man show, Handicap This. Besides being two really cool guys, these gentlemen know how to break down barriers and explore the humanity in us all. So please open up your minds and your hearts to Tim and Mike. Hi, Tim. Thanks. Hi, Mike. Hello. Hello, Willie. For Hi. those that you don't know, I'm Tim. And I'm Mike. Very good. Thank you for clarifying that. So can you tell me a little bit about how you two met and how your relationship evolved? Sure. Um, it was many years ago, many years ago. I, it was 2001 and I was, uh, hired to be Mike's one-on-one -on -one aide. So it was over 10 years ago and, um, through the years, you know, our relationship, just our, our friendship strengthened and bonded and, and again, the more than a friendship, it became a brotherhood. <laughs> you like that? You like that? Exactly. So it started off as me being his one on one aide, and then it just kind of grew exponentially. From evolved, that. If you will. evolved exactly. Got more hands. <laughs> so we thought, hey, we could do a show like this. And we had a motto that we say we have two mottos we have improvise, adapt, and overcome. And we have other ways, uh, judgment not allowed. Right, and and I was gonna ask that later on in the interview, but I, you guys it just naturally flows here. You know, I I think all of us can take a role in breaking down the barriers, which I believe is what handicap this is meant to do. Is what ways would you suggest that people with disabilities or people without disabilities can do that in their own way at everyday lives? Just strike up a conversation with someone. Don't do the book by its cover. Yeah, I mean that's that's one way. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of ways that people can make a difference. One, um, you know, obviously what we did, we started a foundation, we started a nonprofit organization. Anyone can, can start a, uh, an organization. If you don't want to start one or you don't feel that you know enough, you can volunteer for an organization. So that would be my first thought would be find a, a cause that resonates with you and volunteer for that organization because the people, you know, organizations need help. And if that cause resonates with you, you're going to be a genuine volunteer and that's what's going to help the cause further um okay so you know i noticed the 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 title of the show is handicap this and the disability community has somewhat tried to get away from the word handicap or you know there's just different uh terminologies that people have used what's your take on political correctness well we don't like political correctness i hate political he, he has a strong dislike I have a tangible hate. And I mean that in the most positive way I can. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I think when it happens when people are politically correct, it loses um, their honesty. It, no, it, it, you, you're trying to hide something or you're trying to force something when you're politically correct. What we do is. Or you're we, trying to put it into a box almost. And what we do is we try to open that box. You know, we don't want eliminate the box. Elim or elim exactly eliminate the box. That's even better. Yes. Um, and you know, politically correctness is just it's. It, I think it's it sometimes does more harm than good. And so the you know the probably the premise, even just having the title handicap, this is already breaking down the barriers that people use to kind of protect themselves or protect um, feelings and get down to the heart of the matter. Right. And I think ultimately what it means is, you know, it's kind of like we're saying, hey, he can't this. You know, it, it's um, you guys have a YouTube channel and I was looking through the YouTube channel. And one of the first things I saw was this um, spoof on uh, bringing sexy back. Right. <laughs> and, and so what I've noticed is that you guys use a lot of humor um, in everything you do regarding handicap this, whether it be a video people can find on YouTube or in your show, how has humor affected your attitude um, in, in dealing with your handicaps? Well, I think for, for Mike and I, like just when we're together, 
I don't think there's ever been one day that we've been together in over 10 years, 11 years now. Where we didn't laugh. Where we didn't laugh. Or I didn't make you laugh. Just that we didn't laugh. I, mean, I made you laugh three times in about an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's, it, that's, Mike is just has a great cunning sense of humor. And a biting wit. A biting wit. <laughs> See? <it> just, <laughs> your average person is not going to make a joke about. They're not going to be self-deprecating. And that's how I would describe my sense of humor is self-deprecating. And it just, it's a way to make myself feel better. It's a way to empower myself through my ability to see the humor and stuff. And I think that's what we try to do during the show. So it's a very natural component to my life. And therefore, it's really natural as a piece of the show. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, for me, I, I I love to laugh. And I'm so grateful that I that I have more of a lighthearted attitude towards things. But I find that humor in my life levels the playing field with people. Um, and so it brings them, takes the discomfort out of what they may feel and brings it down to a human to human level. I mean, there are definitely serious parts of the show, yes. but I would say that laughter is a huge part of our show. And people, when they're done with the show, they go on an emotional roller coaster, and they laugh, and they, really laugh. And they I mean, they feel they feel so good when they're, they're when they when they come home when they're uh, when the show is over. They just feel like they just went on this emotional journey, and they just feel so empowered, and just feel like they can, you know, they. They just, they're happy. They're happy. And I also like to improvise. Um, all right. Uh, Tim and Mike, I would like to hear from each of you. Tim, what have you heard? From, how have you learned from Mike? And Mike, what have you learned from Tim on this journey of 11 years? You want to go first? I'll go first. Okay, you go first. I have learned not to, um, or I have learned to take every day and step by itself. And take it and take everything. Take everything take everything in stride and don't don't be afraid to not try something. Even though it's hard. Even though it's difficult. Just uh be be yourself and go 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 for your dreams. No matter how big or small. You. You're welcome. I, I, I think um, what Mike has taught me probably more than anything else in, in, is perseverance. And I, you know, before I met Mike, I thought I knew what perseverance was, um, but I didn't. Uh, Mike just has something inside him that he's able to greet each day with a with smile and, and be. Uh, just uh, for me, he's kind of like uh, that, you know, a light for me. Uh, he's he's shown me that, you know, he, I guess the best way to describe it is Mike has inspired me to do more with what I have. Um, and I always, you know, looked at my situation and, and felt that, you know, I know that I can be doing more. And he, I guess in, in a way that he probably doesn't even know, he continues to push me to, to for me to inspire other people because he's inspired me. Thank you. What a beautiful cycle. And now the show is being used to inspire others. Um, yes. And, and what, has the, what has doing the show taught you? I mean, you've been all over the country and, and seen thousands of people. What has the show taught you? Just to, that we're doing, this is going to sound really simple, but just that we're doing the right thing and we're doing we're doing something good. We're changing the world one audience at a time. Group at a time. Well, yeah, I think what it what really what's taught us the most is that our message needs to be heard. Um, every audience we've been to has like just been blown away by the show and you know, standing ovations and rave reviews, whatever you have, but really more importantly, we, we touch their hearts. Does internally give me a a warm give me a sense that I'm doing something with what I have. Right. I, the, the last thing I would add to that 
is gratitude. I think that Mike and I are both grateful that we have the opportunity to to make this type of difference, and we don't we don't accept that uh, that we don't accept that lightly. That I mean, that's that, that's a high responsibility, and we something that we um, you know hold dear, hold on dear to our hearts. Yes. Well, I to me, you guys are the humorous philosophers. So thank you for being deep <laughs> and yeah, bringing light to the situation. <laughs> I love it. If sure. someone was watching this and they were inspired to bring handicapped to their community, what yes. is it that they would need to do to start the ball, ball rolling? Start, start the ball rolling first is they would have to contact me um, and they can do that. They can find my number on, on the website and whatnot. Um, so that first, they have a conversation with me that I need to understand what they want to do. So, and, and what understand what kind of resources they have. Now, just to give you an example, probably the, the, the easiest fit for us are colleges. That's the easiest fit, meaning they have the space, they have the people usually, and they have the budget. We have businesses uh, that are in, in the community to get involved to sponsor us to come out. So there's all these different ways that, that people can, can, uh, think, can bring us out. The main thing is get in contact with me, and two, you got to be creative. Um, you know, that's what our, our whole life is about being creative, finding creative ways to get through, to get from point A to point B. So if you really want us to change your community, you got to get creative to bring us there. <laughs> Good. I hope a lot of people watching this are resonate with this type of, of cause and, and work to bring you to more communities out in the country. Thank you guys so much for being on Chair Chats and sharing yourself openly with us and continuing to do what you guys do. Um, any last words you would like to say before we say goodbye? Uh, thank you very much, everyone that watches and listening, and we hope to bring the show to the show. I knew you, in particular, in particular Hawaii, because <laughs> that just sounds like a lot. That just sounds like a lot of fun, and I'll leave that alone because we don't want to read between the lines about that. So, so just like I said. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk, and we hope to see you soon. And as always, hand it and keep on keeping out of the world. My, my parting words would just be like, don't accept average. Be be bold and live your purpose. You should trademark me. <laughs> <laughs> I could say anything more or better than that. So with those parting words, I want to thank you for watching Chair Chats. And um, I hope that this show has encouraged you to find your passion and live your purpose, as Tim says. Thank you for tuning thank in. You. And until we meet again, be blessed.